Greetings, greetings, all my dreamers and dreamettes. It's your boy Mickey Fenty, aka Mickey Made It. If you're new to this channel, you know what to do to this channel. Subscribe right now. Okay, today's episode, I have something very special for you guys. You know, it's been a lot of money talk on social media, and everybody has their different perspectives. But in these times, as we all understand together as a community, as just humans, the prices are going up, 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 up and up. And some people get it confused how people are living paycheck to paycheck. And some people just don't want to admit it just because their ego. But on this channel, I like to just get people in contact with the real and the people that's actually telling the truth on social media. So what I did was I put a few people together that had different and similar situations as far as money finances and just this whole talk about living paycheck to paycheck. Let's get it. feels like I will never stop living paycheck to paycheck. The economy we live in is trash. The jobs we work for are trash. They pay you the bare minimum, but want you to show up and give your 110%. How does that work? These houses, they want you to pay a thousand plus dollar for rent and they're 1980 houses. You gotta have a deposit, last month's rent, um, first month's rent. Like, why do I need to pay last month's rent? I don't understand that. Car insurance, car payments, they're rip-offs. Why am I paying $300 for car insurance? I don't understand. Health insurance, skyrocket. Food, skyrocket. Like, I just don't understand how I will ever be able to afford to wake up and go hop on a plane and enjoy my best life. I just don't understand. By the time my kids get to adulthood, they're going to have to pay to open the door to walk out of their own house. I really, really, really rather be a cockroach crawling on the ground for free then have to live this life every day. Like, I can't be the only one who feels this way. Like, I need to know. Y'all that get to wake up and take trips and go across country and do $100 shopping sprees at Target every single day, what are you doing? What's the secret to life? What is the secret recipe that you have that we don't have? Let us know. I live and work in Spain, making roughly a thousand euros a month, which in America is nothing, but in Spain is more than enough to live. I only work 16 hours a week, and I'm able to afford a super nice apartment in the city center of Madrid. Food costs me 20 euros a week. My electric bill is like 30 euros a month. I don't have to worry about gas or a car payment or insurance because the public transportation system is so world class that you don't even need a car at all. Madrid is like the New York of Spain, except if you were living in the city center of New York, you'd have to be making literally at least five grand a month and that's extremely lowballing it. Just their way of life in general like is so much more relaxed and just taking time to enjoy life rather than just working constantly. They literally have a siesta in the middle of the day where they take three hours to go nap or go to a coffee shop to hang out with friends. Like the American mind cannot fathom. It's just crazy to me because like you've been told growing up your whole life that America is the best country in the world that's just so far from the truth and it's like very obvious how much worse it is now that i've gotten out stop trying to keep up with the joneses stop there's no reason you should be buying an a thousand dollar louis vuitton sweater and you barely make a thousand dollars a week and your rent is 1500 what are you doing that that sweater is not that important that designer item i promise you nobody's paying that much attention to you not enough for you to be going to break the bank over a piece of fabric like come on bro trying to keep up with trends and other things that we can't currently afford is keeping a lot of our generation broke and i'm tired of seeing it i don't want that for us you know what i'm saying i want us to, to be great you're absolutely drowning financially 
as a single 29 year old. Babe, it's not you, things have changed. She's 29, I'm 41, old millennial here, younger millennial there. By the time I was 29 years old, I had been married for seven years, I had a kid and I would bought five houses. And I started my married life off with $25,000 in credit card debt and nothing else. And there's just no way that I could have done any of that if I'd been in my 20s for the past decade. 24 years old, I became a real estate agent. And I'm gonna give one example of how that actually worked for me back then, but it would never. There's something called a broker price opinion or a BPO that you can do as a real estate agent. It pays a certain amount of money for you to go out and take a couple pictures of a house and give a valuation. Normally they're ordered by banks. I used to do a boatload of these things every month. Like I was making seven to $9,000 every month just doing BPOs alone, not even counting my property sales. Back then they paid 50 to $100. Guess what they pay today? 50 to $100. It's not you. I just budgeted my paycheck that I get tomorrow and I have $317 left over after my bills for two weeks. <laughs> I'm gonna have to be a hermit. My bills alone are $3,000 a month. I'm a single mom who receives I don't know about you all, but there are a lot of people showing up on my For You page that are basically talking about the, the price of things going up for all goods and services and the rent, things like that. And this young lady is complaining big time and she's getting a lot of backlash for like all of her ranting and it looks like her nails are done and her eyelashes are done and people are pointing those things out. I don't think that that's fair. What I do think is fair though is that she looks like she's sitting in a really nice car. People are spending on average $725 per month on a vehicle. That's not including gas, insurance, maintenance, any of the other stuff. And if you factor in those things, people are spending almost $1,000 a month or over $1,000 a month to just on a vehicle. We need to start looking inward to figure out what it is in fact we're spending our money on so that we can start having some things at the end of the month. So we don't have stupid Americans like these talking about I make six figures and I live paycheck to paycheck. That makes no sense to me. It's the six figure earners that are showing up on my page complaining about living paycheck to paycheck, just like that article pointed out. Those are the people that I really have beef, beef with because why are you living paycheck to paycheck? And I really think it's because you don't have an idea of what it means to live paycheck to paycheck. Living paycheck to paycheck actually meant something. It meant that if you lost your job, that next paycheck, you couldn't pay your bills. Almost all six figure earners have money in, in their bank accounts. They either have money in their bank accounts, money market accounts, 401ks, all this other stuff, 403bs, like they have money stashed away in some account. Most people don't have accounts that they can go and tap into to get money out. Six figure earners do. And if you don't, then you really need to look inward and figure out where you're spending your money. Because I guarantee you, you're riding in a car that you shouldn't be riding in and you're living in an area or community that you shouldn't be living in. All right, I keep seeing people on here saying that they're living paycheck to paycheck on a $120,000 salary. And I'm gonna tell you why you're wrong and you're just really bad at spending your money. General disclaimer, this is for people that are just single people, no kids, no nothing, no outside expenses. But at the end, I'll explain that you still have enough money left over for those kinds of things if you need. So, $120,000 a year. Anyone knows there's 12 months in a year? If you could do simple division, 120,000 divided by 12, that is $10,000 a month. But oh no, we pay taxes, whatever. 25% of that, 25% of 10,000 is 2,500. Take that off, you're clearing $7,500. $7,500 in your pocket, awesome. But let's pay for the stuff that we need to live. All right, rent, highballing rent. $3,000. That's if you're living in LA, you're living in New York City. That's a highball. Most people probably pay $1,500 at most. But say $3,000, you're at $4,500. $4,500 in your pocket. All right. But we want to pay utilities because we like lights and we like, you know, heat. So that's another like $200. Take that off. You have $4,300. Groceries because, you know, who doesn't want to eat and survive or whatever. Another $200 a month for just you. You should not be spending more than $200 a month. If you have roommates or whatever, that's different, but you're splitting the cost. Anyway, $200 a month for you, $4,100. Now let's just say you have a new car. You're paying it off. You got that $500 monthly expense. Take another $500 off, still sitting at a cool $3,600, which let me remind you is more than some people make in a month. <clears throat> anyway, but you also have a phone, because who doesn't? It's 2023. We all sit on those things all day. That is another $100 a month about. So you're down at $3,500. But say you're someone who also has some student loans. Who doesn't at this day and age, right? 
So that's another $500, but you're still sitting at $3,000 of cleared money in your pocket. But let's hypothetically say you're also someone like me who recently, well, I didn't turn 26 yet, but I will be, and I will need to buy my own health care. You get a Gucci premium package, $200. 3,000 minus 200, that's $2,800. $2,800 in your pocket. That is all you technically need to spend. Yes, you still have enough money to pay $40 a month for the gym. You still have enough money to pay, I don't know, whatever the heck you do. But all the expenses you need to pay leave you with $2,800. You could pay for a kid on that. You could buy a house. Start spending your money better. My bills a month come out to $3,845. My income is currently sitting at $2,730. That income is $2,000 in unemployment and $730 in child support. And that leaves me negative $1,115 a month. But this is just what it takes to pay my bills, bills. Not to live, food, gas, clothes, spending money, maintenance, none of that, none of that. This is just bills now when it comes to salary if we're talking salary how much income i need to make a year in order to basically live paycheck to paycheck to bring in minimum fifty five thousand a year in order to live the life i want to live i need to be making about 150. as of today's reality i make thirty three thousand a year to survive live paycheck to paycheck i need to make 55. ultimate goal at the end of the day is about 150. so bringing us back to this debate that i have by june june 11th the latest your girl's gonna make a decision i'm either gonna stay in this apartment or i'm gonna move back in with family live rent utility grocery free i don't have to pay for any of that now who knows what could happen i can most certainly find a job by then i could find a job by june and it could be a six-figure job or i continue selling my social media which is what i've been doing regardless brand deals monetizing youtube money off TikTok, doing my entrepreneurial thing starting the businesses that i want to start etc right so i mean it's possible i'll get this money regardless right but it's like what path is it gonna be because like i said i could stay here i know at the end of the day where i'm at right now as of today the second Employment is not going to sustain me. I would need to pursue, well, I would need to do what I'm doing now, right? Which is continue pursuing a job and just continue scaling all the other streams of income that I have going on as well. Biggest thing is just, you know, the timing. Nobody wants to keep struggling. Nobody wants to live negative, almost negative $1,200 a month in the hole. No one ever likes being in survival mode. But at the end of the day too, like, it's possible. It's not not possible. Creating generational wealth, creating wealth, period. Getting to financial freedom, it is possible. And this doesn't even include, you know, all of the other huge financial goals that I have. So when it does come to the businesses that I really, really want to start, it takes money to make money. It just is what it is. It's going to take a lot of financial investment within myself. Probably going to end up talking about this like in a separate video, but there's certain levels, like certain steps that I'm trying to complete, right? So I have like level one where i'm just trying to get to a baseline like a bare minimum standard of living financially and that by itself takes like 10 grand and then i'm going to get myself to a comfortable to my standard of comfortable living about nine to eleven grand a month right there that's ultimately kind of where we got that salary scale so y'all i don't know i don't know we gonna see come june regardless of the decision that gets made i'm gonna stay faithful and obedient no matter what roof I'm under, the goal doesn't change. Financial freedom, generational wealth, living comfortably. Y'all know it's not just me, it's me and my son. All I can do is keep showing up, and keep being obedient and keep doing what I know I'm supposed to be doing. And at this point, we're really gonna see what God does. It's no way around not living check to check. We all live in check to check at this point because you wanna live in a good neighborhood, right? You don't wanna live in a hood. Bills and shit, all this shit is not doing nothing but going up. The average fucking apartment, one bedroom is like fifteen, sixteen hundred dollars. Especially if you living on your own, that's what make it twice as harder. That's why people always try to go out for like a second source of income, really just to have some freaking money. Like you know what I'm saying? And it's kind of fucked up because it's like, okay, let's say you work two jobs. You work two jobs. You don't have no fucking time to yourself because when you're away from the first job that you at, you thinking about going to the damn second job or you got to get ready to go to that second job. Like I swear, like the, the economy nowadays is like 
it's to the point where it's meant for us to struggle. Like, a motherfucker making twenty five dollars an hour back in March in twenty fourteen. That's goddamn fifty an hour. Now twenty five dollars an hour is like sixteen dollars an hour. Like what? You already gotta worry about rent, and then you gotta worry about bills outside of your house, phone bill, car note. And you know it's a law to have insurance. And that ain't even half of the bills that majority of us got. That's why it'd be so hard to, you know, save money and just maintain a, a good living at least. I get it, you gotta work without looking at the clock, but God damn. I lived in Beverly Hills where everybody's parents are famous and the kids are part of the fame. It doesn't end well. I remember, no joke, a kid telling me, I was going for a jog outside my house in Beverly Hills. I'm going and a guy pulls up. He's like, hey, I'm a follower of yours and I live on the same street as you. And he was like 16. And he's like, yeah, I've been dealing with a lot of struggles. And his struggle was his parents gave him a BMW and all of his friends had Ferraris. And I said, oh my kid, that's not good for a kid. His reality was like, like he was kind of like dog i'm trying to make more money and i'm like why and he's like dude i don't fit in in school and like he was kind of misquoting the wealth thing you know it's like i need to change my social circle some of my friends only have bmws but some kids in squat ferraris and those are the real thinkers and think and grow rich and i want to be like them and i was like well wow paycheck to paycheck in these times, a lot of people are living paycheck to paycheck, so don't be fooled by social media. And just managing your life can save you a lot of money, time, and energy. Until next time, it's your boy Mickey Fenty, aka Mickey Made It. If you're new to this channel, you know what to do to this channel. Subscribe.